Hi, everybody. I'm Butch Stearns of The Pulse Network at thepulsenetwork.com. We're here at the 2012 Activate Network Summit. I'm joined now by Tom Valenti. He was a professor at USC uh, and specializing in diffusion. Diffusion of innovations. Diffusion Excellent. of innovations. Yep. Does, what does that mean? Do you blow them up? <laughs> no. You, what you try to do is figure out the way that new ideas and practices spread within and between communities. And we've known for a long time that networks are very important for how ideas and practices spread within an organization, within a community, throughout a country. Okay, so any industry or any business that anybody's in, we all know the importance of innovation. But take it to the next level. Why is diffusion important? How does Actually, it work? the innovation part is not that interesting because ideas are always going to be innovated. It's getting the right, right ideas to then spread from innovators to early adopters to early majority and then late majority. And so it's that, that cas cascading process that turns out to be really important. So give us some examples, either through history oh, or, or so success stories. Oh, so the classic stories. example is hybrid seed corn. Around the turn of the last century, throughout the 1900s, 1910s, 1920s, millions of dollars were spent to invent new hybrid seeds and then the agricultural extension service was created to get those hybrid seeds adopted by farmers started in Iowa they diffused through Iowa over about 10 or 15 years and then to other states in the United States different hybrids were made and spread throughout the United States and now of course throughout the world today we have hybrid seeds hybrid wheats hybrid rice everything has been manufactured and genetically engineered in some cases and it's been the process of that diffusion that's made a big difference oh. in us being Able okay. To feed our population. okay, so you give us an example from the turn of the century, which, and now let's go 100 years later. Right. Now let's go just five or 10 years ago, and let's talk about what's at the heart of this summit here. You know, the the harnessing the power That's of right. your of your customers and your employees' network. So really, there's great opportunity, but also challenges to be able to do what they did with hybrid seeds. In, in the past, you would go meet some farmers, get them to adopt it, and the word would spread from farmer to farmer. And in fact, even going back before the 1900s, you had the diffusion of fertility preferences happen across Europe over a couple of centuries. So, But it was always word of mouth, and the importance of word of mouth was always very, very important. Now, leaping forward to the last 10, 15 years, we've had a lot of technology help us accelerate that word of mouth communication and enable us to take advantage of the importance of these very powerful social networks which influence behavior. That is accelerating the pace at which change takes place, but it's also accelerating the amount of competing messages and, and uh, communications that are going on within and between populations all the time. So you use the term accelerating. Um, to me, with all the changes, some things stay the same. And here's what I mean, tell me if you agree, is that while you can get a message out now instantly, and if you put something out right now, by the time you get home, it could have spread like wildfire yeah. about those hybrid seeds or whatever, <laughs> right? But, but here's the other part. Here's what the old school part is to me, is there's still the value in the word of mouth. There's still the quality of the network of people. And that, those conversations keep getting reinforced at this summit. They're the right people you need to talk to, they need to be talking to each other that you put together. That's right. You, you've got to tap into those naturally occurring networks and the trust networks that exist. And so the technology is there as an aid. And that aid is helping establish and, and strengthen existing interpersonal relations, trusting relations, advice relations. And so now there are people that I know and I really trust their opinion and their advice, but I can now get the message from them at any time and at any place. And so it becomes an aid to the existing old boy, old girl social networks that have always been around. So let me ask you this question. As a professor at USC, uh, you're dealing with young people all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, at the Pulse Network, we continually hire young people, whether they start as interns or come on. And I always say this phrase, and it's genuine, I learn as much from them as I'm teaching them. Do you feel the same way? And what, what is going on on college uh, campuses these days? I'll with tell that? you, that I constantly learn from them, which is why I love teaching. They're brilliant students, and they're very passionate about what they do. I'm learning two things from them. One is they're really adept with technology, and so they know how to communicate and interact. And, and uh, Well, they were born with smartphones, like, weren't yeah. they? <laughs> I mean, it's really? Seriously. <laughs> but the second thing that's really powerful is their global outlook. Young people today appreciate that the world is a global place and they really appreciate other cultures, other ways of seeing things and actually value the interaction that occurs between people from different backgrounds. And so I find young people today much more open-minded than I was when I was their age or many. Now see, you reinforce people. something and I learned something today I wouldn't have even thought of. I mean, when I grew up 
And, you know, again, before the Internet, before cell phones, you took that first plane trip, and when you landed here in New England at Logan Airport, the world felt a little smaller place because you took that trip. Yep. Young people today are growing up, and you, you said now that they're more global because they have access to things internationally and globally through a device in their hand. Yeah. So yes. the technology is not about the devices, it's about what it's bringing to people and what they and can do. And it makes it easier for them to say, I'm gonna go to Singapore, or I'm gonna go yeah. to <laughs> you know, to Mumbai because I wanna see what it's like there. And they still have this tether of a Facebook connection and they're not cut off from the world so they can take more chances and see more things and experience what it's like to land in another country. Final question, Tom. This event, Activate Network Summit, what have you learned today here? What's something you'll take away from this and bring back to the West Coast. Well, clearly the power of using a lot of these technologies and ideas for the way business is operating today and that people are understanding that you've really got to know your customers, you've got to know your clients, uh, and you've, you've got to know how everything is all connected up in order to operate with it and work with it in a way that you can learn from it as well as try to influence it. Great talking with hey, you, Tom. Rich, nice to meet you. My pleasure. You Tom much. Valente from uh, USC here at the Activate Network Summit 2012.